Good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So we are in the last day of this week. Uh, you know that this is like the end of the week number two. We are just going to have two more weeks to complete this course. We are in the middle of this process. So it's really, really um, fast, we can say. Ya llevamos dos semanas completas. Vamos a terminar esta semana hoy. Y vamos a completar dos semanas más de trabajo. Um, el tiempo se está yendo bastante rápido. Y sin, like, without thinking about the time, uh, we are almost, almost, almost at the end because we are going to complete two more weeks. But you know that they are eight days. And in this moment, I can feel like, the time is real is going really, really fast that in some cases we are like beginning the hour and then we can see <clears throat> that it is almost the end of the hour. Así que ya vamos nosotros en la mitad de nuestro proceso. Um, Vamos a trabajar lo que es el último tema y también vamos a ver cuáles son la, los temas, ¿verdad? O las partes que aplican para lo que es el midterm, es el examen, ¿verdad? Que tenemos de mitad de eh, curso. <coughs> vamos a estar revisando las, los ejercicios para que aquellos que no lo han hecho, para que los que van en la parte del examen, pues, puedan realizarlo. Para los que ya hicieron el examen, pues, este solo es como un review de los temas o de las actividades que vamos a estar realizando en el examen. Así que vamos a esperar, I think, like, one or two minutes for the others to come. And then we are going to begin with the, um, the or we're going to begin checking the answers. Vamos a comenzar viendo las respuestas que pusieron ustedes ayer en lo que fue el documento eh, que les envié con el cuadro. So we are going to check that part in which we're going to see what is your opinion about the different categories of jobs that we have because in, in the table you have like boring, interesting, um, difficult. So in that case, we are going to see what is your opinion about the different jobs that we have um, related to the topic that we already seen. And I, I, um, I was seeing the document and I know that many of you have uh, answered that part. Ya vi algunas respuestas, vi que algunos ya habían contestado, así que eh, vamos a ir viendo eh, las demás respuestas, ¿verdad? No las, no las leí todas, sino que vi un par, y hay unas que les vamos a arreglar algunas partes. But give me a moment, we are waiting for the others. And we are going to begin with the other thing. Today we are going to talk about a reading. Vamos a hablar un poco sobre la lectura. Um, we know that it's very important that we um, 
focus on the four uh, macro skills that we have, uh, but in this case, it's not just related to English. In this case, it's related to every language that we are like learning or the, the language that we want to acquire in our life. In this case, we are talking about the different abilities that we can have in this kind of um, process. But in this case, we're going to focus on this one macro skill, that one specific macro skills, in which we're going to focus on reading part. Vamos a hablar de la parte de la lectura. Tenemos cuatro habilidades eh, específicas o cuatro habilidades súper importantes que debemos desarrollar las cuatro por igual. No simplemente vamos a desarrollar una más que la otra, sino que vamos a desarrollarlas las cuatro. ¿Por qué? Because in this case, it's really important that we can like develop the four skills that we have in English as in Spanish, but we are just talking about English. We need to develop that part because uh, it is very important that we can like hear something and we can understand what people is saying. Uh, at the same time, we need to like acquiring the uh, different um, skills when you are writing, because you know that it's kind of difficult to write something with um, different elements. And if you are writing something, you need that people can understand what are you writing in that um, what, paragraph, a document, essay, a book, whatever you are writing. And then you need to speak because you need to produce the language. You need to, you need to uh, communicate with others. And it's very important that you can uh, practice the pronunciation, the um, uh, grammar, the structures, um, to be polite, to be different things when you are talking. But in this, in this um, um, particular part, in which you need to read something because you need to acquire some vocabulary, you need to acquire some elements that you need to know when you are uh, learning a new language. Así que son cuatro partes importantes, ¿verdad? Vamos a llevarlas las cuatro por igual. Um, I'm going, I don't, I don't know yet if I have four different colors here, but let me have these ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have four different uh, piece of papers with four different colors like this. They are like this. We have yellow, light blue. In this case, it's like kind of menta or, si, sí, lo llamamos como un verde menta in Spanish. Well, in this case, it's, uh, we cannot see clearly the color but it is different from the light blue. So you can see like the difference in this case, like this. But we have four different um, piece of papers. I'm going to take this out. I think it's better like this. Okay. And in this case, this one is for listening. This one is listening. This one is writing. This one is speaking. And the last one is reading. I have this for a um, piece of paper and I need to take all of them with me. Why? Because I need all of these skills to produce the language, to understand the language and to have a better understanding of the language. Entonces, yo necesito estos cuatro. Yo tengo que andar cargando estos cuatro. Vamos a decir que esto es como andar... Mm, cuatro documentos importantes en nuestra cartera. El DUI, eh, para los que tienen licencia, van a dar la licencia. Eh, si tienen una tarjeta de débito para poder pues, hacer sus compras o eh, tomar su dinero del cajero. Y en muchos de los casos hay personas que tienen uh, una tarjeta de alguna farmacia o alguna cosa por el estilo. En mi caso, yo tengo, digamos, cuatro eh, documentos importantes, que es el DUI, mi carnet que me acredita como docente, eh, mi tarjeta de débito, y también tengo una tarjeta de la farmacia. So, in that case, I need to take the four, um, the four things with me. 
Necesito tomar las cuatro. Tengo que andarlas siempre conmigo. Now, if we can see that example with these four macro skills, is the same thing. Andamos en las cuatro tarjetas en la cartera, ¿verdad? Bien protegida, que no se nos vayan a caer, que no se nos vayan a dañar, eh, que no se vayan a perder porque es un proceso para eh, sacar todos esos documentos de nuevo, ¿verdad? Entonces, lo mismo vamos a hacer con las four macro skills. Las vamos a andar cargando nosotros en nuestra imaginación, like something very imaginary, y siempre que podamos las vamos a trabajar. And in this case, I am speaking in English and I am trying to communicate something and I am practicing. Yo ya practiqué la parte de la, del habla, pero en este momento yo quiero um, escuchar a otras personas hablar en inglés para yo empezar a producir, ¿verdad? Eso. Entonces, estoy viendo series en inglés. Um, I am listening some music. I am speaking with someone that is speaking English. Um, I am like practicing uh, listening some conversations, some audiobooks, some podcasts, whatever we are uh, listening. Entonces, yo estoy practicando la parte de el escuchar. But now we have the boring part. I say boring because I know that... Um, There are a lot of people that don't like to read. Hay muchas personas a las que no les gusta mucho esta parte de la lectura. ¿Por qué? Um, because they don't have this habit or this one is not like um, a, a hobby in this case. No es un, no es un pasatiempo. Um, because in some cases we, we read some books because of the school, because um, we need to look for something on the, on the book or, I don't know, some boring things. But it's very, very, very important that we can cultivate or activate this reading part. Es muy, muy importante que tratemos de activar esa parte de la lectura porque en inglés eh, nos va a ayudar mucho. Esa parte, aunque digamos, ah, pero ¿cómo me va a ayudar a mí? Well, in that case, you can, like, um, read the words, you can create vocabulary, um, you can practice how many words you can read in a minute, um, you can change the language in your brain. Es importante que aprendamos también a hacer estos ejercicios de cambiar el idioma cuando hablamos. Estamos iniciando, pero esto lo podemos ir haciendo de a poco. It's kind of a game. You can, you can look this um, exercise as a game. I found this exercise kind of difficult when I was like um, at the beginning of my university. Cuando estaba al inicio de la universidad era como una parte bastante difícil donde yo decía, How can I speak in both languages at the same time? Es bastante difícil porque cuando empezamos con el proceso de la adquisición del idioma, we hear the word in English, but then we translate the word into Spanish in our brains. Y hacemos ese proceso que es bastante tardado en el que empezamos a traducir. Hacemos una traducción literal de las palabras y luego empezamos a trabajar todo la, la parte de la del um the translation and then we are going to make a sentence and we are going to uh, search for the meaning uh, that is something logical pero al mismo tiempo no estamos haciendo algo lógico porque ya me trabé ya me enredé ya no supe qué hacer entonces al principio es bastante difícil pero luego nos acostumbramos a esos cambios empezamos a cambiar y empezamos a Uh, think in English, uh, speak in English, listening in English, even we can dream in English. Podemos hasta soñar que estamos en algún lugar y estamos hablando inglés. Es cuando ya nos empezamos a acostumbrar a este proceso. Pero tiene que ser con las cuatro, con las cuatro habilidades, no solo con speaking y con listening, que yo puedo decir, son las más importantes. No, in this case, we need to have the four Listening, speaking, writing, and reading. ¿Por qué escribir y leer? 
¿Por qué no solo podemos quedarnos con el escuchar y el hablar? Because uh, when you are going to have like a different job, um, or in this case, um, we can think about um, making something bigger. Cuando se hace algo más grande, por ejemplo, en la empresa en la que ustedes trabajan o la empresa en la que diferentes personas trabajan, um, puede hacer algún convenio internacional. Maybe. We can say. Um, y se puede um, llevar, pues, a que ustedes trabajen con personas de otros países. And then you need to write some emails, you need to write some documents for that people, and you are going to do it in English. Or when we are searching for something um, on the internet, in some cases, we're not going to use Spanish. Because in some pages, in some uh, blogs, in some, I don't know, even the, the people that like to play some games, in some games, you need to, to write in English because they are like international. Para las personas que les gustan los videojuegos, hay, hay videojuegos que no traen todavía la parte del español. Entonces, les va a tocar, ¿verdad? Como dicen a la fuerza, escribir en inglés para poder, no sé, quizás um, dar a conocer un problema con el juego, eh, para conocer de actualizaciones, different things. O para las personas que les gusta comprar en línea, a veces pues el vendedor solo habla inglés, porque ni es ni siquiera de Estados Unidos, sino que puede ser de algún otro país, pero ya habla inglés o, se, o escribe en inglés porque le sale más ah, cómodo. Entonces, por eso es importante que desarrollemos las cuatro, las cuatro habilidades. Um, how can I begin with this uh, process of reading um, in English? It's kind of hard, but you are going to do it. Para los que ya leían eh, libros en español, que ya era como un hábito, pues, le va a costar a la hora de eh, leer en inglés, porque acuérdense que tienen que acostumbrarse al vocabulario. But at the same time, it's not like, it is not going to be really hard because you are going to feel like you are in, in your space. I recommend that people can read a children's book, Libros para Niños. Why children's book? Because um, this kind of books has like a very easy language. Usan un lenguaje bastante sencillo para que los niños pues lo comprendan, ya que ellos están empezando en su proceso de lectura y si ponen palabras muy complicadas, frases con una estructura demasiado eh, pesada, pues a los niños ya no les va a llamar la atención la lectura. So, in this case, I have this kind of books. This one is Who Stole the Wizard of Oz. Estamos hablando de El Mago de Oz. Entonces, este es un libro de un grupo de niños que pues tienen que descubrir un misterio en una biblioteca. But if you can see, I mean, I think it's not going to work like this. But if you can see, this is the page and you have just a paragraph. This one is not like you are going to say, ah, oh, it's kind of hard because it has a lot of words. But this one is kind of easy to read in a couple of minutes. But The language, that is the, the important part. La, el idioma, I, I mean, la forma en la que se escribe, el lenguaje que se utiliza es bastante simple. ¿Por qué? It begins with the word, the crime. Here, the crime, el crimen. Y comienza, my sister Becky and I were stretched out on the front porch one morning thinking out loud about how we should spend our summer vacation. Aquí está hablando de que la hermana, que se llama Becky y ella, pues estaban quizás sentadas, eh, estaban eh, como, like, um, haciendo, ¿verdad? Así como estirándose y estaban enfrente del, pues, del portón, ¿verdad? De la puerta del frente de su casa. Y estaban pensando, ¿verdad? Como hablando en voz alta acerca de cómo deberían de pasar su verano o las vacaciones de verano. 
So in that case, it's not a language that is kind of complicated. We are going to find words that are different for us, but what are we going to do? I know that, um, oh, I don't know. For me, it's not like a thing that I want to do. Um, you can mark your books. You can write notes in the blank space. Uh, you can like put some color on the words that you are not sure what is the meaning. Se puede marcar, poner notas en los espacios en blanco. Eh, podemos ponerles colores, que con los colores es mucho más fácil aprendernos las cosas. Eh, a mí no me gusta marcar los libros porque pues siento que eres no something for me. Pero también son estos libros that we can found in the second hand stores. Son libros de segunda mano, o sea, son libros usados. But um, here in my place, or in this case, en el lugar donde yo vivo, um, it is not kind of popular reading in English. And you can find this kind of books for a couple of sense because in this case um if i am not wrong i find i mean i found this book for 50 cents 50 centavos 50 cents y vale normalmente eight dollars ocho dollars no es tampoco tan caro pero um, son ocho dollars y yo lo conseguí en 50 centavos so, so it's kind of cheap and in this kind of books, you can like make the the writing process, like marking, like putting colors, like doing whatever you want. And I found a lot of books in English that are like this kind of cheap because I have a Harry Potter books. Um, my last acquisition is a, a Hobbit book. Tengo un libro de El Señor de los Anillos que igual lo conseguí en una tienda de segunda mano por 50 centavos. So it's a, a very, uh, it's a treasure, es un, es un tesoro, porque es, ustedes saben, El Señor de los Anillos es una de las, now, uh, de las sagas como bastante populares y no son libros muy baratos. But I have a lot of books, but that is not the point. So, we are going to see first the exercise and then we are going to read the article that we have on the platform. Vamos a empezar primero con la lectura de la actividad, luego vamos a pasar a la plataforma a leer el artículo y luego vamos a ver lo que es um, la parte de de los ejercicios. But let me take this out because I have a lot of free space here. Okay. Aquí tengo ya la tabla, vamos a mostrarla, pero quiero hacerlo un poco más grande para que ustedes puedan ver acá. Okay, this is the exercise that we had on this page. Era poner, ¿verdad? Cuáles eran los oficios que ustedes creían que eran. First, boring, aburridos. Second one, easy, fáciles. Eh, number three, dangerous, peligrosos. Number four, exciting, emocionantes. Uh, don't worry, I didn't take the assess, uh, the um, uh, attendance. No he tomado todavía la asistencia, no se preocupe. Ya voy a pasar la, la lista. Um, luego tenemos difficult, que es difícil. Y por último, stressful, que es estresante. So, in the boring, we have lawyer, es abogado. In this one. Uh, le vamos a cambiar acá y le vamos a poner security guard. Security guard, que es vigilante, ¿verdad? O el personal de seguridad. Librarian. Mm, I think that many people think that is boring, but that is my dream. I really want to be a librarian. Sí, me gustaría ejercer, ¿verdad? Ser una bibliotecaria. But in my case, I, I really love books. So. But, you know, this is the, the, the exercise. Cashier. Mm. Cajero, cajera. Dancer. Bailarín. Something boring. Mechanic. Mecánico. And counter. 
counter. Mm. I don't, I think that is the same thing, or you want to say the same thing with cashier, counter. Well, and the next one, we have uh, easy ones. Tenemos en los fáciles, the postman. Um, en ese caso, los carteros, pues, maybe it could be easy, pero no la tiene tan fácil con algunos perros, que no sé por qué no, no les gustan los, um, los carteros, sino que los persiguen, les ladran y pues, a veces tienen que salir corriendo los pobres. Delivery man. Oh, eh, las personas que entregan los pedidos. Eh, driver. Las personas que, pues, manejan, ¿verdad? Diferentes tipos de eh, automóviles, ya sea livianos, pesados. Receptionist. Una recepcionista. I think portero. Dancing is easy. Eh, ser bailarín. And again, driver. Dangerous, peligrosa, bodyguard, sí, un, un, una persona, ¿verdad?, que arriesga su vida para proteger a otros. Uh, soldier, I think in this one, military, is soldiers, um, is very dangerous. Policeman, that is dangerous too. Security man, las personas de seguridad, también es un trabajo peligroso. Um, we have soldier, police, and police. Exciting, emocionantes, astronaut. Racer, eh, in this case, the people that like to go to take this, like, this kind of adventures. Scientist, actress, mm, writer, very good. Again, racer and tour guide. Ah, en este caso, la persona que le gusta, verdad, eh, viajar mucho, eh, le gusta conocer lugares nuevos, pues, ser un guía turístico es una, eh, un trabajo muy emocionante porque se mueven de lugar, de lugar en lugar. That is kind of uh, exciting. Difficult. Doctor. Yes, of course. President. Programmer. Yes, of course. Surgeon. Again, programmer. Doctor and mechanic. Son trabajos bastante difíciles, ¿verdad? Ser doctor, cirujano, anestesista, eh, presidente, eh, programadores. Um, stressful. Ingenieros. Accountant. Again, engineer. Bus driver. In this case, I'm going to change this one. Bus driver. Salesman. Mm, sí, puede ser bastante estresante ser vendedor, ¿verdad? Más que todo cuando las personas, pues, no quieren escuchar las ofertas o están enojados, están molestos. Again, engineer and programmer. Okay, so thank you for the participations. Gracias por las participaciones que tuvimos en esta actividad. Estas actividades están registradas ahí en el, eh, siempre en Google Documents. So if you can access to them, you can find the information on those pages because we have two different um, eh, activities that we have completed already. So I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to look for the platform. Vamos a cargar la plataforma mientras voy a buscar la asistencia para que podamos tomar la asistencia. Today is Thursday, eight, very good. Andrea. I can hear uh, some can sound, hear. but I don't know. Is Andrea here? Present. Okay, thank you. Daniela. Present. Thank you. Denis Alberto. Present teacher. Thank you. Eric Alberto. Guillermo.
Ismael. Present. Thank you. Joel González. Present. Thank you. Jonathan David. Present. Thank you. Luis Mario. María Salomé. Present. Thank you. Marvin Rigoberto. Mayra Alejandra. Noé Danilo. Present. Thank you. Pedro Antonio. Present. Thank you. Walter Alexander. And William Alexander. Present. Thank you. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Okay. It is complete. Okay, I'm going to look for the video in which we are going to listen um, the reading of an article that is going to be with the job profiles. Vamos a ver los job profiles that we have on the video. Um, we are going to read, but also we are going to listen. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put the image or the video without the sound. You are going to read the um, job profiles and then I'm going to play again the video, but with the sound. Vamos a hacerlo primero sin el sonido y luego con el sonido para que vayamos leyendo la información y luego la vayamos escuchando y después vamos a hacer la actividad que corresponde. So, we are going to begin with the video without sound. Let me share this screen with you. Vamos a echarlo, I mean, vamos a verlo sin el sonido y luego vamos a ponerlo de nuevo con el sonido. So, let's see this information.
Okay, I'm going to put the sound and we're going to listen. What is the information that they are reading? So let's go. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll develop prediction and inferencing skills after reading and discussing an article on job profiles. Reading. Job profiles. Lisa Parker has two jobs. She works as a waitress at night, but she's really an actress. During the day, she auditions for plays and television shows. Her schedule is difficult, and she's tired a lot. But she's following her dream. Lots of teenagers want John Blue's job. He plays video games for eight hours a day, and he gets paid for it. John is a video game tester for a big video game company. Is it ever boring? Never. John almost always wins. Becky Peck walks in the park every day for many hours, rain or shine. Becky is a professional dog walker. She walks dogs for other people. Sometimes she takes 20 dogs to the park at one time. Carlos Ruiz is a busy man. He plans lessons, grades homework, helps with after-school activities, and, of course, he teaches. His salary isn't great, but that's okay. His students like his class, so he's happy. Television shows. Okay, we have four different uh, job profiles. We have an actress, a video game tester, a dog worker, and a teacher. In the uh, actress, we have Lisa Parker. And it says, Lisa Parker has two jobs. Pues Lisa tiene dos trabajos. She works as a waitress at night, but she is really an actress. Ella trabaja como mesera por las noches, pero en realidad es una actriz. During the day, she auditions for plays and television shows. Ella, pues, en el día, hace sus audiciones para eh, algunas obras de, de teatro y para eh, programas de televisión. Her schedule is difficult and she's tired a lot, but she is following her dream. Su horario, pues, es difícil, está muy cansada, pero está siguiendo sus sueños. And in the video game tester, we have a John Blue. And it says, lots of teenagers want John Blue's job. Muchos adolescentes quieren el trabajo de John Blue. He plays video game for eight hours a day. Él juega videojuegos ocho horas al día. And he gets paid for it. A él le pagan por eso. John is a video game tester for a big video game company. Is it even boring? Never. John almost always win. Él trabaja para una compañía grande de videojuegos. Entonces, él lo que hace es probar los videojuegos y decir, ¿verdad? Donde hay fallas, donde eh, en qué escena pues no funciona algún comando. Every kind of details. Pero dice que no, nunca se aburre porque casi siempre gana. Then we have a dog walker that is Becky Peck. And it says, Becky Peck walks in the park every day for many hours. Rain or shine, Becky is a professional dog walker. She walks dog for other people. Sometimes she takes 20 dogs to the park at one time. Ella, pues, sale a pasear perros, ¿verdad? Ese es su trabajo. Ella está ahí con ellos en el parque todos los días por varias horas. Llueva o no llueva, ella siempre va a llegar. Becky es una eh, profesional, ¿verdad?, en esta área y lleva a pasear perros por otras personas. Obviamente, ¿verdad?, se le paga por ese servicio. A veces se lleva 20 perros al parque de una sola vez. And the last one is a teacher, that is Carlos Ruiz. Carlos Ruiz is a busy man, es un hombre ocupado. He plans lessons, grades homework, helps with after school activities, and of course, he teaches. Entonces, él está muy ocupado porque 
planifica sus lecciones, eh, califica sus tareas, ayuda con actividades después de clases o después de la escuela, y por supuesto, él enseña. His salary isn't great, but that's okay. Su salario no es muy bueno, pero está bien. Sus estudiantes, le, a sus estudiantes les gusta su clase. So, he is happy. Él está feliz. So, in this case, we are reading the uh, different parts or the different elements that these people do during their jobs. So, that is the important thing here. Son las partes importantes que nosotros necesitamos, las que estamos leyendo en esa parte, ¿verdad? Elementos importantes de el trabajo que ellos realizan. So, we are going to see what is the activity that we have for this one. Vamos a ver nada más la actividad. Uh, let me go to the second part, that is this one. That is the last knowledge check of the section three. Esta es la última, ¿verdad? De la sección tres. So, in this case, we are going to read the, the article, but we are ready to uh, read the article. Tenemos el mismo artículo acá. Lo que vamos a hacer nosotros es, um, like, select the name of the people. Vamos a seleccionar los nombres. This one, after I win. ¿Quién lo dijo? After I win, o quién es más probable que lo diga, ¿verdad? After I win, I take a break. Después de ganar, me tomo un descanso. Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck, or Carlos Ruiz? John Blue. Blue. John Blue. Okay, John Blue. Next yeah. one. I don't usually work in the summer. No trabajo normalmente en el verano. Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck, or Carlos Ruiz? Carlos Ruiz. Okay, Carlos Ruiz. Next one. The restaurant closes late around 2 a.m. Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck, or Carlos Ruiz? Lisa. Lisa Parker. Okay, Lisa Parker. Then, number four, that is the last one. After work, my feet and my arms are tired. Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck, or Carlos Ruiz? Becky Peck. Okay, Becky Peck, let's see. And they are all correct. Very good. Entonces, las frases son según el trabajo de cada uno, ¿verdad? After I win, I take a break. Después de ganar, me tomo un descanso. I don't usually work in the summer. ¿Por qué? Porque es maestro, pero es en otros países, ¿verdad? Donde tienen este horario de verano, donde normalmente hay como un interciclo. Then, the restaurant closes late around 2 a.m. El restaurante cierra tarde, alrededor de las 2. Y la última, after work, my feet and arms are tired. Después de mi trabajo, mis pies y brazos están cansados. ¿Por qué? Porque ella es la que pasea a los perros, ¿verdad? Entonces es ponerle bastante esfuerzo a esa actividad. Now, we're going to end this session with the, um, the midterm. Vamos a terminar con la parte del midterm, que es el examen que tenemos que tener completo ya para hoy. So, we're going to begin with the part of the listening. Vamos a ver la, el listening que tenemos por acá. Voy a abrirlo en una nueva porque a veces no me suena dentro de la plataforma. So, let's see. Okay, we are going to listen this one. One. I really love our new house, Dan. What's your new house like, Julia? It's my dream house. It has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The bedrooms have big closets. Wow, three bedrooms. That sounds nice. 
too. Yeah, I really love the house, but I need some furniture. What do you need? I need some things for the kitchen and the living room. What's in your living room now? Well, there are some chairs, but there isn't a sofa. Three. What do you need for the kitchen? Well, there's a refrigerator and a stove, but there's no microwave oven. Hmm. You know, I have a microwave oven, but I don't really use it. Do you want it? Yes, thanks. Okay, there we have the information of the audio program. So we are going to see. It says in the first one, there are no two, three bedrooms. Three. Three bedrooms. Three. Three. three, okay, okay. Three bedrooms. There are three bedrooms. There are some chairs in the dining room, living room, or the kitchen. Living room. Okay, living room. Julia needs a, for the kitchen, a microwave oven, a refrigerator, or a stove. A microwave. Okay, a microwave oven. Very good. All of them are correct. For the ones that um didn't not complete the emitter, you have the answers here. Para los que no lo han completado, aquí están las respuestas para que vayan trabajando ustedes y no se atrasen. En la número uno es three. En la número dos es living room. En la número tres es microwave oven. Next one. Complete the conversation. Um, complete the conversations. Use the simple present of the verbs. Select the option that contains the word or words to complete the question and answer. Vamos a elegir cuáles son las palabras correctas. Tenemos en la conversación uno. Your apartment building an elevator. Do have, does have, or do have. Does have. Does have? This one. Does have. Okay. Next one. Yes, it does, do, don't, or doesn't. Does. 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 Okay. Conversation number two. The bedrooms, closet, does have, do have, or does have? Do have. Do have. Do have. Okay. No, they do, does, do, doesn't, or don't. 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 Okay. Very good. Let's see. Okay, very good, excellent. Están todas correctas. Entonces, en la primera tenemos, does your apartment building have an elevator? Yes, it does. Next one, do the bedrooms have closets? No, they don't. Y ahí completamos la parte dos. Vamos con la parte tres. Unscramble the sentences. We are going to scramble the sentences and we are going to write each sentence in the correct order. So, in the first one, we have the words, there, there isn't a mirror in bedroom. Number two, no pictures, the hall there are in. In there aren't any the curtains dining room. En la número uno, ¿cómo nos quedaría nuestra oración con esas palabras? There isn't a mirror in the bedroom. Okay, there isn't a mirror in the bedroom. Okay, vamos a dejarla ahí. En la número dos, ¿cómo nos quedaría? They are, there are, are not, not pictures in the hall. In the okay, ho there are no pictures in the house. There are no pictures in the hall. Okay, hall. Y en la tercera? There aren't 
any curtains in the dining room. Okay, there aren't any curtains in the dining room. Okay, vamos a ver. Very good. They are all of them correct. Vamos a ver el siguiente. Okay, next one. Select the correct words. Vamos a seleccionar las palabras correctas. Eh, vamos a ver cuál es la palabra que le corresponde a lo que se está diciendo en la oración. En el primero, A works in a hospital. ¿Quién trabaja en el hospital? The nurse, the pilot, or the service person. The nurse. No. The nurse, muy bien. A talks to people at a hotel. Habla con las personas en el hotel. The cook, the receptionist, or the singer. The receptionist. Very good, the receptionist. A uh, sits all day. Se sienta todo el día. The judge, the musician, or the police officer. Judge. 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 The judge. Okay, vamos a ver. Okay, very good. Para el número uno, the nurse. Para el número dos, the receptionist. Y para el número tres, a judge. Muy bien. Vamos con la siguiente. Nos quedan solo dos para completar la cuota de actividades de esta semana. Select questions to complete the conversation. Aquí vamos a seleccionar las preguntas. Eh, tenemos como respuesta, I work at a restaurant. Para que yo dé esa respuesta, ¿cuál va a ser mi pregunta? One, how they like their jobs? Where do you work? Or what does he do? Where do you work? Where do you work? Okay, where do you work? Next, uh, next one. He's a firefighter. Es un bombero. How they like their jobs? Where do you work? What does he do? What does he do? Okay, what does he do? And last one. They hate their jobs. Ellos odian su trabajo. How do, how do they like their jobs? Where do you work or what does he do? How do they you like are. their jobs? Ah, okay. How do they like their jobs? Okay, y ahí está todo correcto. Excelente. Y vamos con la última. Complete the conversations. Uh, in this case, we are going to select the verb be, the verb be or have. Aquí vamos a ver cuál de los dos vamos a utilizar. Y ponemos a singer have a exciting, has a exciting, has an exciting or have an exciting job. Has an exciting. Has an exciting. Has an exciting. Okay. Next one. I disagree. Es estar en desacuerdo. I disagree. I think a singer's job is boring or is not boring. It's boring. It's boring. Okay. Next one. Conversation two. A flight attendant have a stressful, has a stressful, has an stressful job. Has a stressful. Has a stressful. Okay. I has agree. Okay. I agree. It is not a stressful or it is a stressful. It is, it is stressful. stressful. Okay, it is stressful. Conversation three. A cashier's job is easy or is not easy? It's 
is easy. Okay, is easy. And the last one, I disagree. A cashier it has a difficult, have a difficult, has a difficult or have a difficult job. Has a difficult. Okay, has a difficult job. Let's see. Ok, todas están correctas. Excelente. Entonces, acá tenemos en la primera has an exciting Estamos en clase, ¿sí? Usted tiene que, bueno, a ver si hay... Has an exciting en la número uno is boring en la número dos has a stressful en la número tres uh, is stressful en la número cuatro número cinco is easy y la última has a difficult muy bien so in this case we have completed the whole thing aquí ya completamos todo el las actividades que tenemos para esta semana o que teníamos para esta semana <coughs> I'm sorry so in this case we are like going to begin with the section number four for the next week vamos a comenzar con la sección número cuatro la próxima semana and then we are going to end with the section number five in the last week and with the final exam para la última semana vamos a completar la sección cinco y el examen um, final. So, we are in a great uh, way because we are completing um, our activities. So, I think that we are in a in a good like um, way because uh, we have completed all the activities that we have for the section one, two, and three. So, it's almost done. But give me a moment. Okay. Uh -huh. So, this is the end of this session. Um, we are going to see each other on Monday. Nos vamos a estar viendo el próximo eh, lunes con la próxima eh, sesión. Remember that we are going to begin with the topics that we have on the section number four. We are going to complete all the activities that we have for that uh, part of the, um, of the uh, program. And we are going to see new topics that we are going to develop during the four days of the week. And then we are going to end that week and then we are going to begin at the last week. So I hope that you have a really good weekend. Espero que tengan un fin de semana muy bueno. Um, and also have a really good night and we are going to see each other on eh, Monday. Nos vamos a ver el próximo lunes a la misma hora, así que we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other on the next session. So, good night and see you. Good night. 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 Good night.